Jordan, I'm Lynn Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Julio, what's bugging you? Oh, on today's show, we're going to talk about insects. <laughs> yeah, those bad bugs uh -huh. that eat your ornamentals and your vegetables. We're also going to talk about peekaboo bugs. That's when you see the damage on the plant, but never see the insect itself. We're going to also discuss insects that actually hide in plain sight, like scale. In our last segment, we're going to discuss dangerous insects to <laughs> us that can carry disease. So stay tuned and get bugged after this. <laughs> Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's triple action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide labeled to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's triple action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So, the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's triple action and expect to have the best-looking plants in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome, Welcome, everybody, everybody to, to Bloomers, Bloomers in the Garden. garden. And, and insects' table manners will tip off to your control. control. Oh, yes. What the heck does that mean? Well, well table, table manners. I can manners. tell you. <laughs> All right. So, so different, different insects, insects feed different ways. ways. Mm. So, so you actually have, like, insects with mouth parts with that actually chew the leaves and, and make holes in the leaves and eat the leaves, like, all of a sudden, it's like, what happened to the leaf? But then there's also rasping or sucking insects. Now, now that, that type of, of it's, it's going to be, say, a slug, slug does, does that, and it, and it kind of feeds off of that. Mm. And, and then, then there's, there's the kind that inject their mouth parts or like, like a proboscis into the leaf and suck out everything from, from the, you know, makes it yellow. And, and yeah. It, yeah, it's, yeah. And, but <laughs> being that, first of all, so, so a chewing mouth, mouth part, so that means it's going to be pretty evident on the plant. plant. What, what they'll, they'll do is that they they can eat almost the entire plant, plant 
So, so you're, you're going to see, see those. They're, they're going to be visible. visible. Grasshoppers eat this way, leaf cutter. I, I, there's, there's all different, different types of, of insects. You know, obviously caterpillars eat that way. Yeah. You, know, you, you always see um, somewhere, like if you have a, a I've watched, watched something, something on caterpillars. caterpillars. It, it always shows, shows them like, like eating a devouring, devouring a leaf, leaf like in rows, like, like you're, they're eating corn, corn, mm. um, corn like we corn, corn. <laughs> off, the <cob. laughs> off the cob. So again, yeah. it, it is, is the, the major, major insect group, group that have chewing mouth parts. parts. Um, again, it's <laughs> termites, termites. Oh, beetles. Oh, yeah. I don't. Go, go ahead, ahead, give me one, Julio. Tell me a chewing. I did. Wow, wasps. Yeah. Not that. I never thought of that. Oh, yeah. Because there, there are different types of, of wasps that, that, that do things. There's, there's, there's like leaf cutter bees. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, so, so yeah. anyway. The, the next one, one okay, is where it's the rasping or sucking mouth parts. Mm. Um, it scrapes the tissue off of the plant, um, basically leaves, petals of flowers, and then sucks up the fluid that ooze from the damaged area. So, rasping mouth parts, thrips, thrips, mites. Mites are a huge problem. But thrips feed on like the plant tissue, um, open flowers. They even eat the pollen too. Wow, how about that? But it's the mites to me that become a major, major problem. Uh, see them a lot. It, it, and, and what, what happens, happens is that the different, different you never see the sucking mouth parts of the of the insect the way that it eats. That you'll see some damage, minor damage to the foliage, right. but it turns the plant yellow. Same thing with the piercing mouth parts that they basically turn the plant yellow. And as, as opposed to, to like, you, when, when it's, it's chewing, it's like, oh, a piece of leaf is missing. Something's mm-hmm. eating my you plant. Can see it. You can see it. Yeah. As, as opposed to my, you know, you know Alberta, Alberta spruce, spruce is getting yellow. yellow. Right. You know, right. what's right. going on with that? Mm-hmm. Now, again, one of the things that really is a problem with the piercing mouth parts, and one of the biggest things in that we had a, a listener give us a call. I had 100 roses, and we talked about, Rose rosette disease. Mm-hmm. Now, rose rosette disease is actually, it's a virus, but the virus is carried by an by a actual mite. This mite is tiny, tiny. One two hundredth of an inch long. Okay. So really tiny. Microscope. You do need a microscope because it's hard. It's it's almost impossible to see, mm-hmm. and it sucks out the the sap of tender new growth of both bud stems, and again they, they transmit the virus into the plant system. You following me, Leo? Yeah. Phone. Now rose rosette causes growth on roses to where it it all of a sudden looks really different where it uh, causes like almost a witch's broom. Witch's broom is a, is a tight cluster of growth that all of a sudden appears or one of the symptoms of rose rosette where all of a sudden your roses, they get these thorns that are like super compact and, and all really tight on the plant rather than be spaced together. The new growth becomes twisted and gnarled at the top and it's usually like a red color. It wasn't that big a deal because it used to only, uh, it, it, the mites would only go for wild roses. Right. And you and I have had this conversation. Those of you that are regular listeners know that I feel that now knockout roses have become the new wild rose because they're planted in such abundance. And, and that, that it used to be saying that, that, oh, they're disease resistant. resistant. They, they don't, don't get rose resent. Uh, guess, guess what? They do. Yeah, they do. They, they do. do. And, yeah. and uh, uh, one, one of the, the, the funny, funny things, things is, not that funny, but in a parking lot of a grocery store, look, I am live a boring life, okay? <laughs> I'm in the grocery store, the, 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 the parking lot, and I'm looking. They had planted... Uh, knockout, knockout roses, roses. it must have been beautiful when they were put in, in or the first couple of years and now they barely have any foliage it's covered in rose rosette oh and the issue, issue with rose rosette, rosette is it isn't curable you have to get rid of the plants 
And again, our listener, he said what he does in the beginning of the season is he treats with an insecticide that is a drench that's systemic that he can control and kill the, any mites that may happen on the plant. So you say, all right, how does this little mite blow from one spot to another? Have you ever seen dandelions blow in the wind like this little thing? The mites blow in the wind. They're so small that they will, the wind will carry them and they will end up somewhere else. On a rose. Right. Exactly. And so what happens is that this, I mean, it's a disease carrier needs to be controlled in order for your roses to be safe. So when we're talking roses, just straight off systemic insect control. Okay. And again, any of those insects that are hard to see that are so small, like this mite, you have to control them because there's only two types of insecticides. There's a contact spray, which you have to hit the insect, or you have to make the plant poisonous to the insect by a systemic insecticide. There are no organic systemic insecticides. Zero. Okay. Um, I know somebody's looking for it, but, uh, you know, those greedy corporations. Because whoever finds it, whoever finds it's going to be like, you know, the driver's seat. But the issue is, is as of right now, there, there are no systemic, um, there are no systemic organic insecticides. Now, Julio, you've had issues where you've had customers come in and that there are obviously chewing insects. You can just use a contact spray. And so you can go organic. It doesn't hurt. You know, it doesn't, doesn't hurt the environment the way that some of the chemicals do. But when it comes right down to it, if you're using the chemical non-organic insecticides or herbicides the way that it's meant to be used, then you will have no problems. The environment is safe. It's those of you out there, and I'm, you know who I'm talking to. Oh, if I use a little more, it just might be better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen you out there, Bill, Fred. Yeah, you're out there. All right. You're going out there and say, I can use a little more. That's a commercial size. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. Follow the instructions. Read the label. Get nice and comfortable in a chair because it's a long label. Everything now is really long, but, you know, you really want to pay attention to what it says. My suggestion is buy your control products at your local garden center so they can tell you all about it and not write it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> write it down on the bottle itself. Then that way, you're not going to forget. If you write it down on the bottle, two ounces per gallon, you know what to do. Not like, oh, if I do two, if I did four, I could do twice as much. That's not, not true. Okay, so use everything according to the label instructions. Rosers, that's a problem. Oh, it is. Um, and that you need to spray your roses. And diseases get into roses and all kinds of things get into roses. And we've talked about other shows. And we're going to talk about um, something coming up. And it's, it's we're going to tell you, I'll give you a hint. Here's a teaser. Do you want them a scale? You want to, if you buy a golden euonymus, just buy the darn bottle of spray to go with it and just use it every three weeks, and they'll be beautiful. Otherwise, you're going to have euonymus scale, you know? It's so prevention, right? Right. It's like, you know, having Reese's peanut butter cups around me. I'm sorry. I'm there. Yeah, I know you are. If you want them to scale, see you want them. It's a Reese's peanut butter cup. So they just go for it. Oh, here it is. All right. We're going to take a break in our next segment. We're, We're going to talk, talk about, about how to take, take care of bagworm. Bag All right, we'll, we'll be, be back, back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 
Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Coast of Maine's Organic Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the best soil for raised bed gardens, planter boxes, and container gardens. It grows amazing vegetables. It is made with a mixture of manure compost, worm castings, lobster and kelp meal, mycorrhiza, green sand, and biochar. It's ready to use straight out of the bag with no need for additional components or tilling. If you love growing fresh and hearty vegetables, herbs, and flowers, Coast of Maine's Castine Blend Organic Raised Bed Mix is the perfect choice for you. At Coast of Maine, we believe in growing organically and buying locally. Castine Organic Raised Bed Mix can be found at these fine stores. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. So, you don't want to wait too long. No, no. For bagworms. Yeah, really. You know, you're going to miss your chance to stop them. All right, so what's a bagworm? Julio, tell me what a bagworm is. Let's see if you Mm. won't get it confused. A bagworm is an insect, and it, first, you, you can't see them, by the way, and uh, at least I can't see them. Yeah, what do they look like when uh, they're when when they're before, mature? When they're mature, okay. It looks like almost it looked like a hang. They hang. So from it looks like, like a little cone, a little cone hanging from. Uh, they yeah. were hanging from a right. spruce right. one year. That, correct. Julio is correct. Some people think bagworms are tent caterpillars. Yeah. Those are the things that look like, you know, a giant spider came down from Mars and created this thing all over your tree, and there's all these <laughs> disgusting caterpillars that are coming out of it. That is tent caterpillar. That is not what we're talking about today. We are not talking about, but we're talking about, like Julio said, the bagworms that right now, they are immature and that the bags that hang on your tree, I've had people, oh, and I love the cones. Oh, yeah, the the cones are beautiful yeah. on those. Like, they're not supposed to have cones. Uh, that's actually an insect. Uh, <laughs> they don't particularly like to hear that. But uh, the issue is, is the only way to control them once they're in there. And this is, let's say, it's like they're juveniles now. And then they look like these little caterpillars. And they build the bag as they're crawling around on your plant. And that's the only time where you get to control them. And that, my friends, is in June, <laughs> not when they've got the bags. Uh, we're going to put a video up on our YouTube page where I took a picture of a bagworm that had it and was kind of dragging it across a legal pad. Um, and it just it just is amazing to see because you've got to control them when you can get to them. Once they're in that bag, not going to work, not going to work. Because basically, they have done their thing, they are ready to lay eggs, they're inside that bag, and then all of a sudden they hatch, and they come out. So, bagworms, bagworms, you gotta do it now. You gotta kill the adults or the juveniles before they lay eggs, okay? That's the whole control. And they're easy to control. First of all, if you use a systemic, they are going to be feeding off of that uh, plant. But also, a contact absolutely works. If you start a spray program for bagworm today, do three applications about seven to ten days apart, and you spray it with a contact spray like eight, for instance, that's from Bonide. Um, You could use spinosad, 
and that that is uh, spinosad. Look for look for it on a active ingredient near you. That it's organic, and that that will control them. And it again, you, a systemic. Let me back up. Julio, let's explain what a systemic is. Yeah, so systemic it could be uh, granular, granular if you like, and uh, what you do is going to spread that around the base of the plant and then water it in, and then it'll go up the root systems all the way to the top of the plant. That way you're covered completely. So it absorbs through the plant, and we always use the term like an antibiotic. So it makes the plant poisonous to the insect. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the easiest Easy. thing. But those, it's, again, we, we talked about it in the beginning of the show. There's no organic, no. systemic, but where, again, a contact, if you want to go organic, you got to use a contact, okay. and that means repetitive spraying. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you're using organic, it's going to be repetitive spraying, yeah. and you got to keep after it. Yeah. yeah, bag worms, control them now, and that look on our YouTube page. Please look up on our YouTube page, and please ring the bell and, and give us a thumbs up. Um, Aaron, what, what's the actual thing? Subscribe. That's what we need. Yes. Yeah. We need to subscribe. <laughs> you're getting all this information. It'll be delivered right to your inbox. Oh, look at that. But if you go and take a look, You'll see what they look like, and and they're it's kind of gross. It's it like is. you know they're yeah. dragging this thing behind them, and that they're moving and they're eating all over the plant. They're taking those pieces, and then once they, you know, oh they're nice. They look yeah. like cones. <laughs> the only way to t really get rid of them once they have that cone done, throw them on the ground, step on them real hard. <laughs> now, are they considered a chewing or are they a rascal <laughs> or what, where would you consider them? A they're like a caterpillar. Caterpillar. Yeah. So, so they're, um, but they, what they're doing is they're chewing. defoliating the plant, yeah, it. and that they're eating it. And that you can't tell because they look like cones. It's like yeah. what the heck, you know. But if you get real close, uh -huh. and actually, you know where I saw it? I, the one that it came from the cemetery. Yeah, I, I did a cemetery and I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, it's like covered in bagworm. I mean, literally, oh I think there was more brown bagworm foliage than there was green foliage. Wow. So it's something to take care of and take care of it now. And if you have had it years before, you absolutely are going to get it now. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Uh, if you've got any questions about bagworm or about... Uh, Rose rosette disease, especially. Yeah, really. uh, any other things we're talking about, please call the hotline. That's 609 685 1880. Leave a message. We will get back to you. Again, that number is 609 685 1880. We'll be back mm -hmm. in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface feeding insect. It does it all guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. 
and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. If you're like me, then you absolutely love birds. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center has you covered. They're dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds of all sorts. Want to bring more birds to your yard? Then you got to see this place. Bloomers has a huge flock of feeders, bird houses, bird seed, and much, much more. Want to feed the birds and not the squirrels? They have this absolutely cool bronze bird feeder that will drive those sneaky squirrels nuts. They'll be moving to the next door neighbor in no time. OMG! Bloomers have these absolutely adorable birdhouses that will turn your yard into the perfect bird B&B. They carry all types of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. Bloomer stocks, Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and much, much more that will keep those beautiful birds coming back for more. Bloomer's Holman Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County. For more information and directions, check them out on the web at bloomers.com. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, you got to see this place. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I see damage (laughs) and holes, lad, but I never see an insect. What's going on? (laughs) Well, this a thing that drives me crazy. If if anybody's had a rhododendron, okay, or, or even an azalea, and that you find that all of a sudden there's notches like taken out of the the sides of the leaf. Yeah. You ever you ever see that, yeah. Julio? Oh yeah. Okay, but no, I don't have an insect. It must be a bird. <laughs> you know? Oh, we get that. We hear it all. We hear it all. <laughs> but really, what it is, yeah. it's a taxus weevil. Oh. Weevils wobble, but they don't fall Weevils down. Do you remember, do you remember that? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. I don't, anyone? Anyone? <laughs> I'm sorry. A I'm cultural st- joke. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me get this show back to the eighties. Uh. <laughs> um, so weevils, Texas weevils, they feed at night. Mm. So you well, never see them. No, I'm at sleep. So I spray it every day. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and that's, well, it's not there. So, again, an- another reason to use um, a type of insecticide that's a systemic as opposed to using, uh, instead of using a contact spray. The, the one thing that Fertilome has is an azalea and insect it's an insect control for azaleas and rhododendrons with fertilizer. Yeah, and right. so it's a systemic insecticide that is has the azalea fertilizer in it. Mm, excellent. I love it. It's a great product. Great product. Yeah. What drives me nuts, it doesn't sell very well. I know. It doesn't that's sell cool. very well. But it should. Every rhododendron, every azalea, every boxwood, yeah. every broadleaf evergreen should get this yeah, stuff. Right. Uh, it's, it's formulated just for them. Okay. So... How about slugs? Oh, especially slugs. <laughs> I've empl- I've employed a few. Uh, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Can you add the yeah. uh, <laughs> drum <laughs> thing? <I'm sorry. laughs> All right. Anyway, slugs. <laughs> oh, yeah, it it's funny because here it's not as big a deal. Like I've been to parts of the country where slugs. If you go to Washington State, right? Slugs are like. Um, they have gigantic displays of slug <laughs> control, and they know all about uh, them like we know Japanese beetles. Sure. But slugs here, they're kind of sneaky. Yeah. Any, you ever have a hosta? Yes. Slug food. Slug, yeah, Between it. the deer and the slugs. Uh-huh. That is too. And that there's also, <laughs> you had a cricket. 
Yeah, you do you have a cricket? You, it's driving you nuts. Oh, crazy! <laughs> because these are are insects that only are active at night, yeah. and that's where it's like there are no seams. I had, <laughs> where are they? How are they? <laughs> I've got holes in my leaves. Yeah. Uh, and again, thrips are another one. Thrips are are thrips are another rose plagued uh, insect. Earwigs. You know what an earwig is? Yeah, I've never heard. Earwig, of that. Earwigs are kind of those things that that where they um, where you touch them and they roll up into a ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, generally yeah. they feed at night. They're good. Um, again, thrips are, are difficult to spot, especially on, on roses. All these things feed at night. So that's why you may not be seeing them. So don't think that the insect is gone. You've got to, you know, do a little research. Again, contact your local garden center. That's what we're here for. Um, that, uh, again... It's an important thing to control these things, and that's where you go to a systemic. Uh, if you're spraying, for instance, if you're spraying um, a contact spray and you're doing it late in the evening because you're being kind to your pollinators, and that, that way you can maybe get some other beginning to get active, maybe, a systemic is going to work the best. the best. Now, we have a suggestion. Diatomaceous earth is a great slug control, and that when we talk about insect controls, we have insect controls like any of the oils. Smother there, there you know, smothers, smothers the insect and kills it that way. We have others that just outright poison it and kill it that way. But this, this is one. like a nasty, like kind <laughs> nasty. of you know, gruesome yeah. horror movie type thing, and it's so simple because it's diatomaceous earth. Yeah, and it, this is the same little kind powder. of thing. It's not the same exact thing that you put into your pool filter. But what it does is that it cuts the bottom of the soft-bodied insect. It's like a razor blade. Yeah, yeah. peels it right open. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. like walking on razor blades. Yeah. But it is organic. Yeah. It's organic. And um, I know that that sounds awful, but it can also be made into a spray. Where you can you can spray the the plants. So, hosta, Both ways. hosta, I would use it as a spray and around the base. That'd be great. And and diatomaceous earth is as organic as you can get. Okay, it's for also indoor indoor uses too. Um, you know what they use it for? What? Not at my house. Maybe your house. my house. Bed bugs. Bed bugs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just teasing you. A Again, it's you ever have and again, this is inside the house stuff. Right. Silverfish? Oh yeah, plenty of them. It's a, yeah, plenty of those. So <laughs> thanks for letting me know. <laughs> that uh, so you know, silverfish are those oh, things God. where all of a sudden they scurry down. It's, it's like, where did yeah. it come from? Yeah, it's you know. Totally <laughs> so fish. that will control it. And again, it's because it will crawl along the dead. It also is can be used for for ants. It's definitely earwig wigs. And again, it's those close to the ground insects and again diatomaceous earth as organic as it gets mm -hmm. and again you can mate you can mix it um, there are other slug controls but honestly i think this one is the best remember that uh before like all this stuff people were doing using a concoction of uh, beer <laughs> oh yeah they would put beer on a plate beer on a plate yeah yeah for the slug yeah i don't know I don't i've heard people come over and drink it <laughs> so again it, it's something that 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 you can use. I don't the beer thing. Uh -huh. I don't. If it rains, yeah, you know, it's 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 not reliable, not reliable. So, again, if to control those insects that are night feeders, you have to employ a method where when they are active on the plant, there has to be something there to take care of them. Understood. Understood. All right, we'll be back in the garden after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 609- 
685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So, Julio, uh-huh. when does a bug not not look like a bug? <laughs> yeah, I tell you about that. Well, it's going to be when it's scale. Scale is an insect that almost is like, you know, in the insect world, it's like a barnacle. <laughs> where when it's young, it's got legs, cruises around, walks around. So, oh, look, let's move in here. And <laughs> it's an interesting plant because, first of all, there are two different types. There's a soft scale. That's interesting. Is there a musical soft scale? Is there, yeah, there's something yeah, called yeah, soft yeah. scale, Aaron? Not necessarily. Yeah, anyway, not really. soft scale <laughs> produce a soft, thin, cottony, like you've ever heard of cottony scale? Okay. And there's this waxy coating over them, and that they can't be that waxy coating. It doesn't wipe off or anything, but they always produce. <laughs> I am a sore, Julio. They almost produce a lot of stuff called honeydew. And what is honeydew, Julio? An, Don't swear. I, no, I won't. <laughs> it's an excrement. Explain that, please. That's, <laughs> what it is? Yeah, that's a little highbrow for me. Uh, a little too uh, too high. So, it, it, it's honeydew uh, is is let's be more it, it excretes a fluid that fluid. Is, yeah, fluid. Yeah. It, well, if you want to call it that. <laughs> All right. So oh, what gosh. happened is that if you've ever had, like, black-stained patio furniture or a tree is, like, covered in, like, this black soot, that is honeydew. And uh, they are ter- – and, and un- it's really weird because an insect that doesn't move around is the one that produces the most. Oh, now, that's one of the biggest things with spotted lanternfly. Sure. Same thing, produces a lot of honeydew, but we're talking about scale. Now, there, that is the soft scale. Now, there's another type called armored scale, and they have, like, a hard shell. It's, it's like, it, it, it's, it's ready to be grossed out. Mm-hmm. It's actually, it sheds its skin, and then it conceals the body, and the armored scale will overwinterize. Ready? This is the, they overwinterize 
as females because the men die. Oh, poor guys. Yeah, well, you know, they uh, did their job, and the winner said, the women said, like, They're gone. we're done, thanks. <laughs> See you later. We're nothing. <laughs> You know, <laughs> we've got to carry on the next generation. So, and if you see them in the winter, those are pregnant, pregnant, pregnant oh, okay. scale. What's what's the deal about this scale? You sometimes it doesn't look like anything. It looks like a bump. Yeah. It looks like a like a bump on say a branch, or it looks like a really like a bud that's swelling. That's gonna you know, like some people. Oh look, it's Is it's it growing. Like a, like it's a like scab? well, it's, you only know, get a scab on your skin. Like that little bump. Uh, I guess. Well, look at yours. You got a couple of. They're not yeah. scales though. Yeah. <laughs> but these are look like they're they're literally bumps, and uh-huh. and that you can tell. But you go and you you can scrape them off, okay. but they're hard to control. And again, going back to what our first segment was talking about, is you need to control them when they're actively around. You need to control them in a juvenile stage before they get to the until once they're sure. in that other stage. Then when they're attached to your branch and then you try to spread them, then you have to use a specific type of insecticide. The good news is, is that you can use an organic, which would be like a horticultural oil, and it will control them. But what I want to talk about is an armored scale, again, that uh, it, right now they are hatched. And if you grow... Any type of euonymus, whether it's a ground cover euonymus, or whether it's a euonymus marginata, the bright yellow one that's an upright, Beautiful. or the or the uh, silver king, these you upright euonymus look great, but they're going. They are host specific to euonymus scale, mm. and what happens is again these are females that overwinter, April and May. Okay, they begin laying their eggs. Eggs hatch, and really, it's they're probably hatched right now. And the crawlers that they call they're, that they're wandering over the bark and they're looking for another time. And there are so, I've seen you on a scale so bad, it looks like somebody covered the branch in cotton. And it just if you have you on us, don't even think about it. Just spray it, okay? Because you're gonna need to. Um, you need to, to take care of it because it takes really about four to six weeks for it to transform from um, of, of a from a juvenile to an adult, and that, that's where you get your shot where they're they're out in the open. They're not they're not underneath that armor. Um, it is uh, it's something that that can be taken care of, but the good news is we get a little bit of help. There are. Uh, parasitic wasps that will are a predator against scale. There's also lady beetles, and like right now, you can go to your local garden center, and they will have um, a beneficial insects. And that's one thing you can do. Uh, it depends on how bad your outbreak is. If you have a serious outbreak, and that you need, you know, they can only eat so much. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I would spray. spray and again, nice. these are an insect that sucker right to your your plant and they look like that it's part of the plant but when you go to scrape it off it scrapes off and you find out that oh man this yeah, i've got scale good. indoor plants outdoor plants and and again there are a lot of different types where do you want them a scale and then there's cottony scale it is something that is easily controlled but you've got to recognize it because it doesn't look like an insect. It's not like something that's walking around. So you've got to control it. You've yeah. got to control it. It's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Anything to add, who? No, I, I had mine on uh, an apple, my apple tree. Yeah? Yeah. Phew, ugly. Yeah. So what did you what did you use? What did you do? Uh, I sprayed it with the eight. With eight. Yeah. Okay. All right. Eight. Non-organic. It's a thrin. It's a thrin, yeah. It's a thrin. Mm-hmm. Explain what a thrin is. That's, we've coined that expression, yeah, it's, so it's don't a, everybody try to steal it. <laughs> so oh, a God. thrin is a... It's an insecticide which comes from an organic, from the organic uh, chemistry. Cr- chemistry of the uh, chrysanthemum plant. That men uh, have... Uh, that man, it's a man-made Maybe. non-organic, and what happens is it has a longer, longer residual rigid, yeah. as compared to the original organic version. Rigid. So the chemistry itself is based on nature... But we've just improved it. Yeah, made it better. A lot. Yeah. Because it breaks down, the original organic one breaks down in sunlight. And, and it's kind of like, you spray it today, it's oh, gone tomorrow. tomorrow. 
Yes. Here today, going tomorrow. Yeah, so <laughs> and a lot of times that just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back <laughs> in the garden talking about ticks and mosquitoes right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, our last group of uh, insects, which are uh, can be tough, uh, especially uh, when you're outside and in, in your patio and, uh, <laughs> and you're grilling and uh, you're having fun. Uh, these guys are always around, aren't they? Not man? to mention your dogs. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to first talk about ticks. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I've got an, a horror movie, okay? So it's an insect that feeds on the blood of mammals oh. and occasionally reptiles. <laughs> they latch on to their host by cutting into the top layer of skin and using a natural anticoagulant to stop the bleeding. They bury their head inside the wound and feed on the host. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. And it causes havoc. Yeah. And Aaron, you, you've had dogs, right? You ever had a dog with a tick? Yeah. Have you uh, have you ever, like, just pulled it out and left the head in, and all of a sudden it started bleeding? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my! It's, I had my my poor lab, you know, Riker. He was like he was like a like a straw. <laughs> no. Yeah, it kept going for a while and, too. And the problem is, is that in their mouth parts, okay, they sometimes carry diseases. You know, um, like the deer tick. Yeah. Real tiny, and it used to be the bullseye. Look for the bullseye. bullseye you look yeah. for the bullseye, uh, so you don't you don't get uh, any disease from that thing. You know, it's yeah. it, 
ticks, you know, and again, that's Lyme disease. But there's also, you know, there's Colorado tick fever. There's all, there's all these things. And that it's important to get control. Now, lawns are where you should start, but you shouldn't start, stop at your lawn, okay? You need to spray the brush around your house, around the perimeter. So if you have like a lot of weeds or you have, say, you know, just a wild, uh, say, barrier between the next property, even if you have a nice pretty barrier between the properties, that's where the ticks seem to love to just hang out and wait for you to walk through and that they move so slow that you don't feel them until later on, look, you know, look, so, look, <laughs> what the heck, <laughs> things attached to me. Yeah. And that's what you're, you know, you're, you're afraid of. Um, ticks are easily controlled if you use the products. A, co- a combination for us that, that we have been talking about, uh, imidacloprid in it, it, its combination with Lambda Seleuthrin. If you just find Lambda Seleuthrin, that will control ticks. But most of the ones that we sell have a combination product in it. So you're controlling, you know, grubs and things like that. And this is a granular product. And that what it does is it, is it the Lambda Seleuthrin is another thrin, like we talked about in our last segment, that based on, on or, an organic insecticide, man-made, but it copies the same control and that that will control the ticks in your lawn. And again, a combination of Lambda Seleuthrin with imidacloprid. Um, Limidacloprid we talked about last week that is probably going away at some point. But it's the Lambda Seleuthrin that controls the ticks. So if you're looking just for a thrin, um, it it'll, it controls a bunch of other insects. We're not going to go into that, but the, the key is it controls the ticks. Now... Spraying, and it this requires you to spray, and I would suggest using a uh, a handheld sprayer that works with your hose. Okay, so it ends up that you dial up on top of what the the rates are. So, say you have two ounces per gallon, you can pour the concentrate right in the container, seal it back up. And that, again, this is called a hose and sprayer. And you can spray your all around your yard. And this will control all those ticks that may be in your brush. And that's important to do. It may seem silly to be spraying weeds, but you're not really doing it to make the weeds better. You're making it so that you and your family don't get ticks. You're looking to use a thrin. Again, it could delta methrin. It could be, you know, the lambda salute thrin like we talked about, and that they're going to have the best control on ticks that that you can get. Now, the other thing we're talking about are mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, yeah. mosquitoes are out. Oh, yeah. You know, I got, I got chased I got in recently. Yeah, yeah. I, I got chased in recently. It's like, yeah. all right, this is ridiculous. <laughs> that, again, mosquitoes, funny thing is, the same thing that controls ticks will control mosquitoes. It's the same active ingredient. Um, there are some repellents that you'll see out there, mm-hmm. and repellents are good. Yeah. Repellents like mosquito beater, and that's a bonide product. It, it's cedar cedar oil, citronella oil, uh, geranium oil, lemongrass oil, and it's all organic. So, and the oils will last for a pretty long time. I would use that if I was having a party. Yeah. If I was having a party or going to put something down, I would put that down down. and that it's something that will control the mosquitoes from getting all over the place. Um, Make sure you're looking for where the source of the mosquitoes are coming from. So if you have a bird bath that you haven't cleaned out in a while or you have a open water source where it's holding water and you see those little squigglies in there. Those are mosquitoes waiting to go through the surface and get their wings and come and bite you. So you got to make sure that you're taking care of any of those water sources and making sure that they're turned over, dried out, cleaned up, and you're keeping an eye on them that they don't, they can't get there. I mean, 
those people that have pools, oh, <laughs> they they gosh. have the neighborhood pool where it's all green. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Right. You know, you're yeah, the source, you're the of, source all of all the all. mosquitoes in town. That guy. Yeah. So, again, um, brutal. There are organic ways to control mm -hmm. uh, mosquitoes, but they do not necessarily last that long. Mm -hmm. Using the thrins as sprays, when you're spraying the brush, it's going to control any of the mm -hmm. flying mosquitoes. For any of the squigglies, mm -hmm. that you're going to have to make sure that you find that water source and that where it's oh, holding yeah. water and get that turned over, and dried out. Up. Because, you know, some of the worst things there are tires. Oh, yeah. Where tires hold it's the water yeah. on the inside and, like, mosquitoes, you know, will breed Love right that. there. Mm -hmm. So, it's amazing. You know, do you have a, you know whole bunch of tires at your house turned over? No, yeah, I'm not a nah, dumpster. You got it. <laughs> All right, so make sure you take care of the stuff. These That's are, right. you know, these are dangerous insects because oh, yeah. they do spread disease and there are issues with them. Um, also, a lot of these same products will control spotted lanternfly and that uh, you want to get a jump on that before they turn they into turn those large insects that we all have those unfortunately learned to know in the, in the fall. All right, we'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. See me in Julio. Well, welcome, uh, Julio. I'll tell you what. Back in the schoolyard. Yes, we are. Lots to learn today. Uh, insects. Go on the YouTube channel. We please subscribe. We have a lot of uh, images that you'll see of the insects. I know it's hard on radio. Yeah. Be here next week, next the week. same All time. Right. Yes. See you hey. in the garden. See you in the garden.